Hey guys and welcome to Slash Rex Games. This is going to be part 6 of the HTTP DLL2 networking series. Um, in this part we are going to be sending sprites across the network and receiving them and sending them to all the other clients. So we're carrying on from part 5. All I've added right at this present time is the extra sprites. So you know that one, sprite 1, sprite ship 1, ship 2, and it's got a little bit of an upgrade, and ship 3. See? The red upgrade. So what we're going to do is when the player joins the server we're going to give that player a random sprite one of these three um, then we're going to have another player join and it's going to make sure that it's sending the correct sprite to the other clients right so everything's centered nicely the way we want it and everything's ready so to start this off we're going to open up our objects here we're going to go into the object controller because this is where our client is created in the game if we open this up we're going to go to these lines over here and I'm going to add something that gives it a random sprite. So I'm going to change this to var a equals instance create. And then here I'm just going to change that with a dot name equals name. And then here I'm going to say a dot sprite index. Yeah, sprite index equals choose. It's going to tell it to randomly choose something. And here I'm going to say sprite ship one. Oops, ship one. Sprite ship two. And sprite ship 3. Also I'm going to tell this to randomize. I don't think I have yet so let's randomize the seeds just so that we can get random uh, ships when we test this out. Okay so there we go we are giving it a random sprite just for the time being. In your game maybe a new sprite will um, happen, well the player would get a new sprite when it collides with an upgrade or it gets shot and then it loses an upgrade or something like that. So in this case we're just doing it here in the create. So now that that's done, we're going to make sure that this client, the player that we're talking about right now, is sending his sprite to all the other clients on the server. Okay, so to do that, we're going to go into our step, open that up nice and big. Now we're going to need to make another temporary variable up here, because remember this controller is going to be doing some things on behalf of, of one of the clients, also on behalf of the remote players, so we don't want it to get variables confused. So here we're going to create a variable called sprite number. Now notice here I've said sprite number, not sprite index or anything like that. Because instead of sending the name sprite ship one as a string, for instance, I'm going to I'm going to be sending an integer from zero to two. So that's zero, one, or two. That's three integers right there. We're going to send one of which, depending on what sprite is selected. It's going to save us a lot of memory space and uh, improve the whole efficiency of the game. So once we've created our temporary variable up there, sprite number, we're going to go down to line 19 over here. This is where we send our position and speed. We're also sending other things. So let's drag that open. Let's make a new line. Now we've got to decide what data type we're going to be sending. Now because I've only got three different types of sprites, we don't need a huge data type. right? So if we go to the data type list over here, we can see int 8 is one byte, and we've got negative 128 to 127. Now I'm only going to be using positive values so I can use an unsigned int, also one byte, from 0 to 255. That's more than enough sprite options here, because I honestly don't believe I'm going to be creating 255 different sprites. So we're going to be using a uint 8, and it's going to save us a lot of space. Look at that, see? The uint 16 is double, and we're not going to be using 65,000 through 535. That's just crazy. So uint 8 it is. Let's go back here. We're going to say h buffer, right, uint 8, obviously, to the global buffer, and here we're going to write sprite number, just like that. So we're going to write that sprite number to the server. But now, before we write that sprite number to the server, we need to make sure that we know exactly which number we are sending. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a a switch statement that's going to detect which sprite uh, index we're using and then it's going to edit the sprite number variable so that it can be sent out. So switch and here we're switching on sprite index I'm going to spell sprite correctly and we're going to do that open this up with some case statements case zero break and here we're going to say sprite number which is this one here so sprite number equals that, change case to actually sprite ship 1. See, we're switching on that sprite index. So sprite number equals 0. I'm going to copy this another two times. 
if we have ship 2, then we're going to send a 1. If we have ship 3, we're going to send a 2. Close that up. Reduce all the space. So there we go. We're detecting what sprite we have, and we are giving it a number, and then we are sending that number to the server. So right now, I'm going to jump over to the server side, and we're going to gather that sprite number, and we're going to then send it to all the clients. So save that over there. Okay, and we've got the server here on the left. Going to objects. And before we do this, we need to go into object player and make sure that we have a variable that it can hold that number that we're sending it. So client sprite. Set that to zero. Okay, so that's an I'll create. Say okay. Then we're going into the step event over here. Open up some code. Go down to where we receive the variables from the from the client. So it's right down over here, case two. Open that up. We're going to say client sprite. So that's the variable we just uh, initialized to zero. H buffer read u int eight. Remember, we need to keep the same data types when sending and receiving. Otherwise, it's not going to get anything. Get that from the buffer, just like that. So now we have received that variable, saved it in this object player. So now we've got to send that variable, you know, broadcast it to all the other clients on the current server. So to do that, we're going to go up to where we send things, right over here. This is this line. We're going to increase the space here. We're going to say h buffer write u int 8 again, global buffer, and we're writing client sprite just like that. So we're getting the sprite, we are setting this object player's client sprite variable, and then we're just broadcasting it to all the other clients on the server, just like that, and that's a 2. So now if we save that, and we go back to our client over here. Now, we need a variable here, we need an initialized variable in a remote player so it can hold that value. We're going to go here to these ones and just say server sprite equals 0. So 0 is going to be the default, which is the very first ship. Right there, that's our default. Save that, okay, okay. Now we need to go into the controller again. And we've got to receive that message from the server, the broadcast message, and give that value to the remote player so that it can do something with it. So in the step, going down here, we need to go quite far down over here. So this is where it receives stuff to be set for the remote players. So firstly, remember we created that temporary variable, sprite number up here. Let's drag it down over there equals h buffer read u int 8 from the global buffer. Alright, so we've done, that. we've done that. We've read in that extra detail right over there. Now, here with the, all the remote players, making sure that we get in the right ID. Then down here, that variable we initialized just now, server sprite equals, and we just set it to this one just like that. So now we have received the sprite value, either 0, 1, or 2, from the server. It's now in the remote player's uh, memory, right over there. So now we need to do something with it. So if we go OK, go to remote player over here, then we are going to go into the end step. That's where it sets everything, right at the end, over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to switch on that variable Go to the create, let's get that there. Switch on server sprite, just like this. Oh, whoops, we're still busy. Switch over there, server sprite. Put in our various case statements. So case zero, break, and we're gonna call, oh, let's do this. Way. Sprite index equals sprite ship one. Copy that, paste it twice more. Let's give us some space. Case one, case two, ship two, ship three. So it's that's that's how simple it is. It's pretty crazy how simple it is to send that sprite across. And we're only using one byte. If we look at this thing, what are we using? One byte extra on that one packet. It's pretty cool. And if you want, you can have up to what is this, 256 different sprites that you're sending. So let's run through this one more time. We've got all our ships right over there in our object controller. We are making sure that we are assigning it a random sprite, just like that, just for demonstration purposes. 
how you assign a sprite to your uh, players is completely up to you. Then we are making the temporary variable in our step because we're going to be using this. Then what we are doing is we're making sure we are sending our sprite index via a value. So we're checking what sprite index the program has given us. If it's ship one, then we're going to send. We're going to set sprite number to zero. If it's ship two, we're going to give it a one. If it's ship three, we're giving it a two. Then what we're doing here is we're writing that value to the server. Now all of this is written to buffer number two. If we go to the server side over here, it's going to read it in that two. Right down over here. There it is. It reads into client sprite. This is a value we initialized in object player. So the client's now getting its sprite. And what it's doing now is immediately as it gets it, it's going to be sending that out to the tag of two to the clients. Just there using the UN date again. It's just writing that client sprite. It's broadcasting it to all the clients. So if we go back here to the client, over here, go into local player, open this up. Whoops, not local player, controller. Open up the step. Look where two is. Down over here, this is where it's getting stuff. Restoring that value in to the temporary variable there. Then what we're doing is we are looking at all the remote players, finding the correct one, and we're setting its server sprite value to that of sprite number. Then within the remote player, over here, we initialize that variable, remember? We need that. In its end step, it's going to be switching on that value, that integer. And if it's a zero, we're going to give it ship one. If it's one, we're giving it ship two. And if it's a two, we're giving it ship three. So that's how simple it is to send your sprites. All you do is, you know, keep a note of exactly what integers you're giving to each one of these sprites. Because, for instance, I've gone through a game where you have 30, 40 different types of, of vehicles or something. And it's really easy to lose track of exactly what integers what. So draw up a list saying that if I receive or send a zero as a sprite, uh, index it means it's a ship one if it's a one it's ship two if it's a you know a two then it's ship three because you can have a lot of ships here and it's going to get complicated really fast so that's kind of the trade-off of saving bandwidth space when you're sending and receive messages for readability so if you make a note of it it'll be fine and you'll have a good time if you don't make a note of it you're going to make an extremely complicated game and end up putting yourself in the end because you can't remember exactly what integers res correspond to what ships so, okay, now that that's done, I'm going to save both of these. I'm going to run another GM Studio and another one. Run the server. And here we go. So, if we take a look at what we've got here, we have this ship. You can see there, it is sending to all the clients that it has a sprite index of sprite ship 2. We've got this client who's also got sprite index of uh, sprite ship 2. And then this one here at the top he has got sprite index 1. Let's move this over. Grab him. Over here, see? He's a 1. And he's sending his sprite to every other client through the server. And here, notice in the server, I haven't got it displaying you know, all the sprites, because generally the server is going to be running in the background. You, just, you don't want anything too glamorous there. It's unnecessary. So it's just represented by these numbers and geometry. So there we go. We are sending our sprites to all the clients. And it's got the image angle right in there. This is one of the reasons why I wanted to do image angle before sending the sprites. Because, like I said in my last tutorial, if you notice, all these kind of ships have, you know, different guns. Some of them have got four guns, some have two guns, some have even more guns than that. And what I like to do is when the player shoots, I like those guns to animate. You know, they like kind of go back a little bit. You can see some mechanical movement there. So what we can do after we've sent the sprite index, we can send another number saying, well, what's the image index? You know, if we're using a sprite strip of a whole lot of these ships of the same type with a different movement of their guns. So I can send uh, a thing saying, well, because our sprite index is sprite ship 2, I'm going to send that 1, which is the integer of 1. Then also I'm going to send another uint8 uh, data type saying that at currently it's in the image index of 3, you know, so it'll have all this kind of movements and stuff going on, all sent in that packet, and it'll be absolutely amazing. So first we're sending, you know, the sprite index representation as an integer, and then we can send anything else we want based on that. So that's pretty simple, everything right over there. If you have any questions on how you can kind of put this into your game, put in the comments, I can help you out. I hope you found this tutorial educational and helpful. Please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe. I do look forward to your feedback and your suggestions. 
If you like what's going on here and you would like to see more of it and support this channel, please check out my Patreon campaign. Every little bit matters and you can become an official named sponsor of this show. Also like my Facebook page for updates on this tutorial series as well as my other gaming tutorial series. I put a lot of updates on there. The project files for Gaming Studio are in the description. Click the links in there. Fiddle around with it. Um, I don't know, make some sprites of your own to add to these and see if you can get them sent also. Should be fairly straightforward. All the, the template of the whole you know, process is right there. And if there's anything you're not exactly sure about, watch this video two or three more times. It, it's going to take you a while to get hold of this thing to absorb the whole process. But as soon as you realize how the sending works and the sprites in general, how we converting their actual index to a little integer, you'll you thank yourself when you save all that bandwidth and your game can run smoother because you're using less network traffic. So as always, happy coding, and I'll see you guys next time for another great gaming tutorial.